Yeah, that's pretty nice. Welcome, everybody, uh, at my session about uh, getting ready for Drupal 11. Um, my name is Björn Brala, CTO at Swiss. Uh, let's start off. Uh, this uh, presentation is open source and actually a fork of uh, or originally a presentation by Gabor. Um, if you want to see the notes, want to uh, check out uh, the presentation or use it for yourself, go on ahead. You can. So, my name is Björn Brala, I'm CTO at Swiss. I've been doing Drupal since, uh, alf since uh, 8 Alpha. We skipped Drupal 7 because we didn't like it. Uh, I'm subsystem maintainer for JSON API, I'm board member for Drupal Association, and do a lot of things in the space of, the, uh, of updates and, yeah, contrib updates. You can find me anywhere as uh, B. Brala in Slack, Twitter, Drupal.org, doesn't matter. Swiss is a Dutch digital agency from Leiden. We do sustainable digital transformations, and we do mostly do that for nonprofit government and healthcare. We love our automated updates, we love our APIs, we love open source, and we're using uh, AI to, to transform the web with Fragen.ai, uh, trying to build a full open source stack for using artificial intelligence. But today we're talking about Drupal 11. So we're gonna check out why we have, we're having Drupal 11 so soon, uh, what's included and uh, some of the tooling to help you get there. So basically Drupal 11 is pretty early, yeah? Because uh, Drupal 10 is only out for like a year and a half and we're already having a new major. But uh, basically, we're having Drupal 11 now because so you can upgrade later. Where um, the good thing is that Drupal 11 is not here because we have uh, major updates we need to do, or we're not forced to do Drupal 11, but we're doing Drupal 11 so we uh, make the process easier. So, Drupal 10 will be supported until 2026. So you still have time for well to uh, do your updates and uh, get ready. Uh, the fact is that uh, major Drupal versions will have uh, longer support times and there will be a bigger overlap between majors to make upgrading easier and more smoothly. And for you as an organization to decide when to upgrade, how soon and how bleeding edge you want to be. So, to talk a little about, bit about that overlapping support, um, Drupal 10 was released in December <laughs> 22. Uh, Drupal 11 will be released in July, end of July, so this summer. And Drupal 12 has already been slotted for mid, light, late 26. But what's new is that we have uh, an actual long-term support. So in 10.4 we'll have long-term support and will be released late, later this year. And then we'll also have the same cadence for Drupal 11, where we have a long-time support version that is released around the mid of 26. What's cool about that is that the uh, end of life for Drupal 10 will be the same time that uh, the new LTS is released for Drupal 11 and Drupal 12 is released. So, and we're gonna do that same thing for Drupal 11. That means that if you're <laughs> risk averse and don't wanna uh, run on the latest major of Drupal or not upgrade too soon, let it have some time, let Contrib catch up, uh, let the bugs be fixed and stuff like that, you're actually able to go from 10 to 11 LTS, which will be quite easy because everything has been fixed by then. But for that to work out, we do need a Drupal 11 right now. And that's the reason that we uh, released it so soon. So let's have a look at uh, timelines. Um, Drupal 11 Alpha was released in May. Uh, the beta has been released not too long ago, the first beta of Drupal 11. This is a great time to have a look at it and to see if things are compatible. And uh, the first release candidate will be released in uh, July, with hopefully a full release at the end of July. If you 
look at how the timeline actually works out, then you have uh, Drupal 10 again until 2026, and you have Drupal 11, which has a quite a long overlap with Drupal 10, with uh, actual support. Uh, we'll do the same for Drupal 12, and what's uh, interesting here is that there's an overlapping period, there might be three major versions supported. I mean, this is good in a lot of ways, because then huh, upgrading is a lot safer. Uh, it will make releasing in that period maybe a little bit harder on the core committers and the core release managers. Um, but we, we do feel that this increases the stability and, and uh, the trust you can have in, in making the upgrades easy for, the, for Drupal. If I have a look what's uh, in Drupal 11, basically it's the same features as are in Drupal 10.3, where there's a feature freeze, uh, but all the deprecated parts are removed. We've been doing this for all majors for quite a, some time now, that there's a combination release where uh, it's basically the same code base, only all deprecations have been removed. There's also a few system requirement updates made um, that you also need to be aware of. If we look at uh, what, for impro what improvements we are looking at, then uh, in 10.2 we have uh, quite a few. And for me, I like JSON API, I like APIs. So I'm happy that we have decoupled menus, for example, which uh, helps your decoupled sites actually communicate menus to the front end. And in 10.1, 10.2, we also merged a deprecation helper, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. If you look at uh, Temper Tree, there's a few cool things. Uh, you saw Dries already showing, uh, for example, the new experimental navigation module, uh, which improves the navigation for uh, the uh, admin interface. Uh, recipes have been added as experimental, which is a good way to reuse uh, code and configuration in your sites even, or in your company. Uh, and there are a lot of other goodies uh, also there. Um, if we look uh, ahead a little bit, then uh, we look at 10.1, uh, and the most important things that are going to be added are probably the product browser, which is pretty close to getting merged, automatic updates, which is also relatively important for the whole Starshot uh, uh, initiative, the experience builder, where Akia is putting in a lot of time to make it happen, and of course, recipe improvements. Um, a lot of these things are also combined, uh, related to Starshot and the goals that Drupal has there. There's a few system requirements you need to be aware of. So one of them is uh, MySQL 8, which you should be using by now. Um, uh, SQLite uh, 3.45, uh, but most importantly, PHP 8.3 is a, a, rec a hard requirement for Drupal 11. But that's good, because PHP 8.3 is relatively fast, and a lot faster than, than earlier. There was a benchmark on uh, Kinsta on uh, performance between PHP versions, and uh, standard Drupal did about 922 requests on 8.1, 941 in 8.2, and 8.3 suddenly does 1430. So the new 8.3 version of PHP is going to bring big, big improvements for the performance for your sites and use the source of your resources, really, of your hosting infrastructure. There's also some dependency updates. Uh, Symphony 7 is, uh, is one of those. Symphony 7 uh, it has been released relatively soon, around now, <laughs> let's say. Um, and the reason for Drupal 11 is that Symphony 7 will be supported for quite a while, so we know we've, we are closing in or uh, adjusting our cadence to also Symphony and a, and a few other packages. There's also jQuery 4, because reasons, and uh, P -P PHP Unit 10, which is uh, not a very fun upgrade, but I'll spare you the details on that. Um, 
Other than that, Core is also working on making Core smaller again. In Drupal 10, we also already saw RDF and quite a lot of modules being removed from Core and moved into Contrib. And there's quite a few modules uh, slotted to be removed again. So we have Actions UI, Book, Tracker, Forum, Statistics, and Tour. Um, the reason for that is that, well, innovating in Core is hard and sometimes slow. Uh, we, we want stability and uh, making new features happen. It's not something that's easy. Um, uh, and we feel that, that a lot of these modules can move a lot faster in Contrib. There's also not really a big ecosystem around these modules, so there's a little risk of moving them to Contrib. One of the things that, for example, Statistics has been talking about is to move it to Contrib and put in the effort to make it a really privacy-friendly way of uh, doing analytics on your website, integrated into Drupal. That's, that, are, that are things that are really hard to make happen in Core itself, because uh, the amount of gauge you need to go through to get code in, in the quality that people want, is hard, man. You don't need to do everything manually. So there's quite a lot of tools around the upgrades to Drupal 11 that you can use to make your life a lot of easier. Oh. The first one is upgrade status. So back in Drupal 8, uh, Matt Glamen uh, built PHP Stan Drupal, uh, which uh, allows the analysis, static analysis of a code. And it's actually was a quite a good way to uh, discover deprecations in code and make sure that uh, website code or module code is ready for the next major. So in order to uh, make that happen, he made a drush command, Drupal check, uh, to be able to check your code or your website. And eventually, because of it was such a success, upgrade status was born, which gives you an interface to show in your site uh, what modules are compatible, if code is compatible, what you could do, and even point you to compatibility issues of contrib modules so you can help getting them ready for the next major. There's also Drupal Rector, which is the uh, next step in that, because if you know that things are broken, you need to fix them. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of those things are automatable. So uh, uh, Drupal Rector was built on top of Rector with a set of rules to uh, make the migration for Drupal 8 to 9 easier. Uh, this was done a lot by uh, Palandir and uh, uh, Prof I'm, I'm, I, ha I have a hard time with his name, Pronovix, <laughs> um, to help the Drupal community automate a lot of the fixes. Uh, me and Swiss and uh, Matt have since adopted that module, since uh, Drupal 10, to uh, improve it and make it ready for Drupal 10, Drupal 11, etc. Drupal 10.3, which will be released about now, is, has all deprecated APC, APIs defined. So this is a good time to just update to Temple Tree and use upgrade status to see how you are doing in regards to compatibility with the next major version. Um, the only thing that might happen is that there are some modules might be moved out of core, but the upgrade path from a core module to a contrib module is pretty good, well defined by now. We had some issues last run, so from uh, in Drupal 10, but uh, uh, the steps are pretty clear and easy. So what you can do and where you can start is, first off, start using PHP 8.3. Start using it now, and then uh, late June, start using Drupal 10.3. Then you can already know what the risks are for your upgrade to Drupal 11, if you decide to do so. And uh, yeah, start, start updating your project to Drupal 11 compatibility. Uh, the tools are there for you to, to be helped in knowing what to do. It's not that hard. Um, one of the things you might have less 
control over is your contrib modules. Huh? Uh, Drupal has quite a lot of contrib modules, and not every, one, every single one is as well maintained as the other one, so you might run into problems with that. Um, to help the community upgrade to the next majors, and mostly the projects, there was a pro there's Project Update Bot. Project Update Bot was uh, developed by Ted Bowman from Akia a while back, quite a while back for the 8 to 9 upgrade, uh, to use Drupal Rector to post patches to the issue queue of contrib modules. Um, that helped the contrib mo modules to just use those patches, make their modules ready without going through the whole uh, process of analyzing itself and stuff like that. It made a lot of the tedious work a lot easier. Uh, for Drupal 10, I, I took that and uh, 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 migrated it and upgraded it so it could work for Drupal 10, for 9 to 10. And uh, it's been running for Drupal 11 for a little while now. And it has opened about 7,500 issues. And there have been uh, over 800 fixed already. Or active, and active is merged, but waiting for new patches. In Pittsburgh, so uh, not last Rukubakon, but last year, I had a few promises around the project update, but in the road to Drupal 11. Uh, we learned that uh, from the upgrade from, for Drupal 10 that there, uh, there were some issues and were some things we need to do better. So we talked about, uh, I talked about fully utilizing GitLab. We're moving to GitLab, so we need to do merge requests. You might do GitLab issues, although those are still not online. God knows, maybe Barcelona, let's hope. Uh, we need to track deprecations better to know what is the work we need to do to uh, help the community upgrade. So what rector thing fixes do we need and stuff like that. And we need backwards compatible fixes, which is really important for the longer support time we now have for major versions of Drupal. So one of the things it now does is merge requests. So it's, uh, the project that I built was, more merged, was moved to GitLab. I've worked with Drum and with Ted to make that happen and uh, uh, run it there. I actually, in Pittsburgh, saw, uh, uh, saw some statistics on <laughs> project usage in minutes for the GitLab CI. Let's say the biggest module was that, and then there was project update, but it does a lot of work there. Uh, merge requests are great because uh, uh, that way uh, uh, the code is, is good, insightable, and it's good for the future. One of the new features we just released is that when a project up to that bot does a, a merge request, that it's automatically also tested against the next major, even if the project has not opted in for that. Um, the second part was backwards compatible fixes. Um, if you want to support multiple major versions of Drupal, there are going to be times you need to support multiple code paths. Something can be deprecated and even removed, and it is needed that you can even can do the old thing also. And otherwise, you need to support like D three different branches of your contrib module. And then, yeah, life is going to get hard. For that, we uh, developed a deprecation helper, which is a utility in Drupal core that allows you to run different code paths uh, based on the version you pass. Um, we also su built support for PHP Stan that deprecations that are inside the backwards compatibility pack uh, part are not reported when doing analysis on your projects. So if you do something like this, you can support multiple projects, uh, multiple majors without a problem. So hopefully this means that uh, when Drupal 12 comes along and module developers want to support Drupal 10, 11, and 12, that they can do so without too much hassle. This has been integrated also in Drupal Rector. There's uh, even a rule to remove those in your project should you use them. So um, uh, yeah, this is looking to be a great thing. 
project analysis results in a lot of data. And as you saw, there were like 7,500 patches posted or issues opened. And uh, we need to keep track on how things are. Akia uses the data for project analysis to build a dashboard. And that's, you can find that on dev.akiap.com slash Drupal 11. And you can see how different modules are doing. So this is also a way for you to perhaps see where are the compatibility issues or what of my, which of my modules do, do still need some work. There's some fun, fun stats from that. So right now about one-fifth, a little bit more than one-fifth of uh, projects are actual, actually compatible with Drupal 11. Um, either a dev or release candidate of beta or a real release. Um, what's also remarkable is the fact that about 50% of the issues still found in modules are the fact that they don't declare themselves compatible with Drupal 11. So a large part of uh, the country ecosystem is already pretty ready for Drupal 11. We just need to put in some patches. This results in that about 70% of the issues can be fixed right now by the bot. So the merge request should be good and merge and Drupal 11, yay! So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome to see. But of course, there's always modules that don't get updated. There's also mo always modules where the maintainer might not have time or has disappeared into the void. Um, and there's a few things that can be done. One of the new things is uh, the Project Update Working Group, which is a group of people who are uh, getting rights to temporarily get maintainership of modules to help them, over the, uh, help them upgrade to Drupal 11. Um, this is an alternative to you having a module you want to have upgraded, you asking the maintainer, help, help, and they, have no, they say they have no response, and then you become maintainer. A lot of people don't want to take the responsibility of being maintainer of a module, but do kind of want to have the module upgraded to the next fair version. This is a second way out. And we we're, we're actually had our first meeting yesterday, so uh, things are still being developed, let's say, how the complete process goes. But the uh, charter is already accepted in the governance project for Drupal. So it is official. We're just working out the details right now. My colleague, Timo, I kind of know where Timo is. My colleague, Timo, and me are both a uh, member there. And there's quite a lot of other people from the community also who are quite knowledgeable here. Another alternative is, of course, using the Composer Drupal Lineage plugin, which means that you can compose or require a module even if it didn't declare itself compatible with Drupal 11, and then combine that with Composer patches and apply the compatibility patch to the module. This is a way to run the Drupal 11 compatible version of the module in your website without going through the issue queue hassle and stuff like that. But I won't, wouldn't advise that. I'd rather have you help get things over the finish line and get everything ready for Drupal 11. So, in summary, Drupal 11 is released in the week of July 29th. Ninth. Go make your code compatible with a PHP 8.3. You will love it. Uh, Drupal Temper 3 is defining all deprecations, so start using upgrade status and Drupal Rector. Install it on all your sites and have a look. And uh, if you are a model maintainer, get them ready for Drupal 11, um, because uh, we need that. If you want to join the fun, there's a meeting every other Monday, and for now, because it's uh, pressure cooker time, every Monday in D11 readiness on Slack, uh, if you want to find me, just find B. Brala at uh, anything. And uh, if you want to do some Formula One racing, come race at the Swiss boot and uh, put on the best time you can. So, thank you. We might have question time for one question. One question. <laughs>
There's a group photo in four. No. Now. So therefore. Uh, ah, no questions. Nah, no one didn't want to listen. Okay, so important, please, everyone go outside because the group photo is going to take place out there and it is happening now. So, no coffee before, no bathroom. <laughs>